So in this lesson, we're going to go ahead and start learning about coroutines. And there's a few ways to call coroutines. I'm going to show you the one that I like the most. And to do that, we're going to go ahead and use the start coroutine. And if we take a look here, there's three different overloads for it. There's one where we can just start an I enumerator, or we start a routine that returns an I enumerator. There's also one where we can just go ahead and call the string method. And another one where we pass in a string method and a value. To be honest, this one and number two are the ones that I use the most. So let's go ahead. We're going to call that play game. And spelling does count. So make sure you have the exact method name. Now, I don't have a value to pass into this particular one, but sometimes when I have a coroutine that I want to start up, maybe I want to loop so many times in the coroutine itself, I can go ahead and pass in an optional value. In this case, I do not. So I'm going to go ahead. And we no longer need to call the method anymore because we're going to be calling it through a start coroutine. Now, what exactly is a coroutine? Well, it's the exact same as calling the method, except it will fire it off as a different process. So instead of just having your main thread running, you're going to have this coroutine running. So think of it as something like multi-threading, but it's not really multi-threading because it still uses the exact same core, but it just goes ahead and takes turn. Now, in order for this to work, we have to go ahead and change this to an I enumerator. And we also have to return something. In this case, we're going to go ahead and take a look at the wait for seconds command. And I'm going to put it right at the top here. And it's simply wait for seconds. And if we take a look here, it returns a yield instruction. And if we come down to the summary, it says it suspends a coroutine execution for a given amount of seconds using the scale time. So I'm going to go ahead, pick that one. And in here, we just simply say how long we want to wait for we press the next button. And if we go over here and take a look, uh, I have a reset delay of a quarter of a second. Now, the easy thing to do if you want to go ahead and start taking a look at statics, we have not covered them yet, would be to go ahead and make this static and then use that in our game manager as well. But I don't have that set up, so I'm just going to go ahead and set another value up here for it. And it is going to be a float. We're dealing with seconds. I always like floats for those. And I'm going to say pick delay. Now, in this case, I want it longer than the time it takes for the button to go off, but not too long. So if it's a quarter of a second, let's try, I don't know, 0.4. So 40% of a second. And I'm going to get down here and put that in. Pick delay. We'll close this off. Let's jump back into Unity. Oh, we got an error. And that's because I actually forgot to type in the yield, return, new. There we go. All right, so yield goes ahead and says, you know, let's let's stop this coroutine. Let's let the rest of the program go ahead and take its turn on the processor. Then uh, on the next loop through, we'll go ahead, we'll perform one operation and, you know, go ahead and let the rest of the processes run as well. And we're going to return a new wait for seconds. And this is just saying, go ahead and wait X seconds again. So we'll go ahead, we'll save that off. We'll jump back into Unity. There we go, the error is gone. And now let's start it up and watch the game manager. Well, it was definitely slower. I think we want it to be a little bit slower than that as well. Let's go ahead and put it up to a full second. We'll try that out. A second seems pretty good, actually. Let me just try that one more time. All right, so it picked five at random. We got the delay going. We got to see the first exposure to enumerators, <laughs> exposure to coroutines. And I do want to do one more thing here before we leave with the coroutine. I'm just going to go ahead and comment this out. And I know at least for me, the first time I seen the coroutine, I couldn't quite understand exactly what it wanted. Uh, a lot of the documentation that I had when I first started with it was all in JavaScript and it behaved differently in C Sharp. At least the, the coding of it was. So I just want to quickly reiterate. Let's say I just wanted to do some code here, okay? Then I want to go ahead and again, yield. We're always going to return. And then we could just return nothing. In this case, null. We could return an int, a specific class that inherits from 
I enumerator. Now, there's a lot of things we can return, but just always remember that when you have that I enumerator, the method that it's in, it's always going to have a yield return. But that's it for this video. I'll see you in the next one. So if you like the video, go ahead and hit that subscribe button down below. It really does help me out here on YouTube. And go ahead and follow me on Twitter. You're a pretty chatty guy over there. When I'm not walking through a forest. Or being stalked by eagles and falcons. Lions, tigers, and bears. <laughs>